All right, so we started in Blender, then we went to Houdini, now we're gonna go to Substance Painter so that we can go back to Blender. Hi, my name is Kays, and welcome to another Right Brain tutorial. So first of all, please forgive that weird flare that you're seeing in this corner right here. I don't know what to do about it. There's like some crazy lighting coming out from outside the window. And anyway, one of those days I will update my camera and set up, just not today. Uh, secondly, um, I wanted to mention the fact that you might have noticed that there's now ads on my YouTube channel videos. This is not by choice, believe it or not. I was actually fairly adamant about not monetizing uh, any of these tutorial videos. I just wanted to kind of put them out there for free. However, YouTube did not give me an option. Believe it or not, they sent me an email where they said, if you don't turn on the monetization, we're gonna do it for you. And basically, they gave me no other choice. So this is how YouTube works. Thanks, Google. But unfortunately, it is what it is. Hopefully, you're not too bothered by it and hopefully you can kind of hit that skip button as quickly as possible, because I hate too many ads. So if you remember from the last tutorial, we took this really cool cosmonaut from ArtStation from this artist named Gezi Bekeye. I continue to mispronounce his name terribly. So Gezi, if you're watching this, I'm terribly sorry. So uh, let's dive back into Houdini and take a look at where we left off and then we're gonna go into Substance Painter and then I'm gonna show you how to go back into Blender and apply these UDEM set tiles that we're gonna generate. All right, so here we are in good old Houdini and if you remember correctly, uh, our, our original model had 14 million vertices, a bunch of unconnected points and it had like uh, over 4 million polygons and we basically took all of that and uh, downsized it down to 4 million vertices and 1.3 million polygons, which is still a lot, but it's not that much. I mean, we, we kind of cut it to down to about like 25%. The other thing that we did is, uh, if you remember, we separated um, all of the different pieces, parts by materials, uh, and then we uh, applied UVs and we assigned those UVs to individual UDEM tiles. So basically what we have now is this. So uh, for uh, Houdini Indie or above users, uh, you can use this uh, handy ROP FBX node. Keep in mind that if you're using certain render engine like um, 3D Light, for instance, you don't want to use the word UDEM in the file name because it will actually confuse it. So um, I usually just write U just to kind of, you know, denote that this model has UDEM tiles as opposed to regular UV you know, like layouts, okay? Uh, we want to uncheck this ex export in ASCII format because Blender doesn't like it. However, some of you guys are using this with the free version of Houdini, Houdini Apprentice. And you can do all of this, uh, well, everything that I showed you in the previous video, you can do it with the free version of Houdini, which is really, really cool. However, what you cannot do is save as FBX. And uh, your only option is probably going to be to save it as an OBJ file, which is fine because Substance Painter has no problem with OBJ files as well. I'll just highlight this null node that we created, right click and click save geometry. Okay, so we want to save the geometry, except this time I'm going to do .obj, okay, because so, we're going to use OBJ file. Uh, but if that for some reason doesn't work, you can do it another way with the file cache node, okay. The file cache node should work exactly the same way um, as the ROP FBX, except once again, you want to specify that, uh, you know, where you want to save it, um, like right here. Uh, you want to specify that uh, you don't want to save the frame range, just want to save the current frame. Otherwise, it's going to save however many OBJ files as you have frames for. And, and, and then you just hit save to disk and that should do it. All right, so here we are in Substance Painter. Now, this is not going to be a Substance Painter tutorial. Allegorithmic or Adobe, whatever the hell it is right now, the, the company that actually made Substance Painter, they have an excellent, excellent set of tutorials available on their channels. And I would highly, highly recommend if you want to get into Substance Painter, start there before you start wandering off to other people's tutorials. Okay. So I'm just going to hit new and we want to go back to Blender, okay? So a lot of people will tell you, well, Blender doesn't use DirectX as a format. It uses 
OpenGL. And they would be correct. However, I'm going to show you a slightly different method of configuring your Blender exports. And we want to start by selecting our FBX. Uh, document resolution is 2K for now. This is just our working resolution. We can always up it on the export side. And as I said, I'm not going to change this to OpenGL. I'm just going to leave it at DirectX and I'll show you why when we go to export. And here's our Cosmonaut and it looks nice and spiffy. So we're pretty happy. And the other thing that we care about is the fact that it has all of our UDEM tiles. So if I go here to the 2D view, you'll see here uh, per material, I have different UDEM tiles that highlight as I select different materials. Okay, so this is a good sign. I want to show you this texture set list. I don't want to dock it. I just want to. I'm using two monitors, by the way, and I think everybody should be using two monitors because it's insane trying to work with just one monitor. However, because I'm only recording one of my monitors and not two, uh, I sometimes have to drag stuff from my other monitors, but they're always in view for me, it's just that you guys can't see it. So uh, what I have here is all of my individual materials that we brought in from Houdini. We, we saved them because remember we were using uh, the material attributes in Houdini and we kept them and we didn't delete them. So because of that, Substance Painter recognizes them like so. We put this off to the side. And uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to bake our curvature map, our AO, all this other stuff that kind of helps Substance Painter work its magic, especially with the smart materials, okay? So here I have my handy dandy uh, little bake mesh maps, okay? And let's see here, I think these are all the channels that I'm gonna need. Uh, if you want to, you can add an opacity channel for the visor, but I don't recommend it. And the reason why I don't recommend it is because I like to control the opacity individually on a material basis back in Blender, or really even in Houdini. So because of that, let's just kind of keep things nice and simple and keep it at base color, metallic roughness, normal and height. So we don't really need to change this right now. So let's bake the mesh, mesh maps. Bake mesh maps. This is really difficult to say. Um, I'm gonna select as output size, I'm gonna select 2K also, which matches the rest of the resolution that I'm using for this model. However, I'm gonna uncheck some of them. First of all, I'm gonna uncheck normal. And the reason why I'm unchecking normal is because we don't have a high res reference uh, model that it's going to calculate normals from, okay? This is the mesh, so I don't really need this. I do want the world space normal, okay? Because I know that that is actually computing something and it's being used by the smart materials. Uh, the next thing is that I don't really want ID. Why? Because we didn't make any uh, color IDs for our mesh in Houdini. We certainly didn't do it in Blender. So there's no, there's no point in baking this map. I mean, there's, there's no information there. We do want ambient occlusion, we do want curvature, and uh, we do want position. And last but not least, there's this thickness. Okay, thickness can be used to kind of fake subsurface scattering. Cosmona is basically wearing cloth and metal and he's got this glass visor. I mean, he's covered from head to toe. There is no skin that we can see, so I don't really see a point in baking this thickness map either. So these are the only four maps that I'm gonna bake. Let's click bake, select the texture, and we're back. It took a while to bake because remember that this is a very high poly mesh and we also have 21 UDEM tiles. Sometimes there's like a little bit of weirdness going on. Like for instance, you can see right here, uh, there's a bit of funkiness going on. I think this is like the ambient occlusion map that, I don't know, wasn't happy right there. I think it has to do with like, normals or I don't know, the way it interpreted the mesh, whatever. I don't think in this case it's going to be a big problem. I can probably even like paint over it if it does give me some issues. Uh, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it. As I said, I'm not going to turn this into a how-to for substance. So I'm gonna try to move in fairly quickly. I'm just gonna show you a couple of materials that I'm applying first and then I'm just gonna basically fly through it and uh, you know and, and then you can you guys can figure it out on your own 
let's start with the first group, this aluminum. This is just like a bunch of aluminum pieces parts. And let's see, I can go into smart material. I'm just gonna look for, I don't know, some metallic. There's an aluminum thing here. It's kind of like this scratched aluminum. Let's try that. I'm just gonna drag and drop it. And it does its magic and it looks okay. Uh, let's see, can I make this into some sort of anodized aluminum? I think so. I think it's giving me the option. Right now the base color is white, but if I change it to something bluish, uh, maybe not quite that saturated. I don't know, something like that. Um, this might be cool. I, I'm holding down shift and the right uh, mouse button to kind of um, change my HDRI around just to kind of see a little bit how this is reflecting. Uh, this works. I'm just going to copy and paste it, except I'm going to go into my base. Let's see here if we can kind of see a little bit everything that I'm doing. Um, and I'm just going to change this from blue to red. There you go. So now we got like a red anodized uh, beta cloth. Beta cloth. All right, jersey. There you go. Jersey stitch. Let's just kind of grab this and drag it over here. And it's okay. It's not a smart material. It's um, it's a just using the UVs. I uh, think it's okay. I don't know if I maybe want it for this particular piece. Uh, yeah, I don't like this jersey stitch at all. Actually, I'm just gonna get rid of it. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna get rid of it here too. And let's try this steel painted. I'm just gonna unclick on this. Uh, steel painted is cool. Uh, it might be a little shiny for my taste, so let's go into the settings here and see a little bit where the shininess is coming from. There's a sharpen, uh, there's a dirt, there is a roughness variation. Let's see here. It's very subtle. Um, and there's a paint. And then there's a steel roughness, okay. So the steel rough is fine, but it's a little shiny for for being this kind of thing. I mean, it looks kind of cool too. And you know, it looks very uh, 1960s science fiction, but we're just gonna increase the roughness a little bit, like 0.6, just to kind of make it a little bit more dull. And we're gonna do the same thing to this paint. The paint is really shiny. So once again, we're going to increase the roughness, uh, make it close to 0.5. Uh, the other thing that I'm not crazy about is that there's a lot of dirt and this is all coming from here. Uh, I think it's a little too much. So what I'm gonna do is there's this mask here and it's using uh, these um, uh, mask builder. If I take this off, you'll see that the dirt goes away. So I'm just gonna go into the settings here and I'm just gonna adjust it. I'm going to say maybe make the grunge a little bit less. Um, play with the scale a little bit. Um, what else can we do? We can invert it. Yeah, that's gonna make everything else dirty. No, that's not what we want. Uh, decrease the ambient occlusion effect a little bit so it's not quite so pronounced. Uh, oh, let's do let's do the visor. Uh, and the visor, it's glass. This guy right here. It's actually like the visor plus a couple of other things. Um, what I'm gonna use is this handy dandy glass film, which is also a smart material. And the reason why I like it is I'll show you why. I'm gonna drag it on. So uh, first of all, it's just like a plain kind of mirror, you know, almost like kind of sunglass type of thing. But it does have a little bit of, you probably can't see it on YouTube, which kind of stinks, but uh, if you can see it, there's a little bit of kind of grunginess that, that to me feels a little more natural to this type of thing. So let's open it up and take a look. So first of all, um, I don't know why, there's probably like a scientific reason for this, but astronauts typically seem to have this um, gold type of leaf on the glass because it probably, I don't know, works better than just regular silver, I guess. 
So uh, in order to get that, all we have to do is just change the base color from this to, we're just gonna make it a little more yellow, orangey. All right, so now we have a glass visor. And then the other thing, as I said, we want to um, mess with the dirt level. And we do have this mask editor, and once again, we can uh, just adjust some of the stuff. So global balance, you'll see that uh, if we make it, woo, that's crazy. Uh, we can kind of increase the amount of dirt on the edges by uh, adjusting this global balance. And also the global contrast is also going to uh, make it so that this grunginess has been building in, in the sides, but maybe they kind of wiped it down a little bit. We're done with the texturing. I already went through all the different uh, uh, materials and stuff like that. And this is what I ended up with. I mean, it's nothing super crazy. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, I guess. Uh, here, let's take a look at it under the iRay built-in render engine here in Substance Painter and yeah I mean, you can see like I mean it's it's basic I mean you know like I could have gone with like a polka dot pattern for like the cosmonaut suit but I didn't but if that's what you want to do go for it so let's go under export textures and um, I already have a blender template that I set up but I want to show you guys how to build one from scratch. So let's create one from scratch. So I'm just going to click plus. So let's start with the base color. And the base color is an RGB, right? It's color. So we're going to click on this RGB layer and that's going to create an RGB layer, which is cool because we want color. All right. So here, I'm just going to make this a little bit larger so we can see a little bit better what's going on. All right, cool. So. Uh, we have this uh, space for the RGB and we're just going to drop this base color from our input map base color onto RGB and we're going to say RGB channels. Okay, great. Now, when it comes to the naming convention, we have to follow certain specific rules because we're working with UDOMs, remember? So uh, the first thing I want is I actually want Substance Painter to create a folder for me for each different material. And the reason I want to do it that way is because when you're using UDIMS, um, you're, you're, you're dealing with like sometimes like hundreds of files, okay? So for me, I find it a lot better to have it organized so that each type of material has its own folder. Let's call it like base color. Okay, so that's gonna be my folder name. This is not the name of the file, just the folder name. And then we're gonna put a forward slash, cause that tells it, hey, if you don't see this base color folder, create a base color folder in there. And then we wanna give this file a name. And we're gonna click on this little dollar sign right here because this is a variable that allows us to kind of save some time where Substance Painter is gonna go and check and pull uh, certain data and then come back to it and automatically fill it up for us, which is gonna be really handy. Uh, so uh, the first thing that we want is dollar project. And what this is, is that whatever my file, whatever my Substance Painter file is called, that's what it's gonna be the first thing that it writes as the file name. So that's gonna save us some time right there that we don't have to like sit and manually retype what these things are. Uh, the next thing that I want in the file name is actually what type of uh, material it is because I, uh, even though it's being saved in its own individual folder and the folder is going to be called base color, I still want that to be in the name of the file just in case it gets moved around and ends up in some other folders somewhere, whatever. So I'm going to do an underscore just to give us a little space and then I'm also going to type base color again, okay? So project name and it's going to tell me what layer of the material this is, in this case, the base color. Then I'm going to do another under slash, because I want another space. And now, very important with UDIMS, we want the UDIM tile number, okay? And this is critical, because if you're working with UDIM, then uh, Blender or any other render engine, for that matter, needs to reference what these tile numbers are. 1001, 1002, 1003, so it knows what, how to match them with the UV map that is part of our model. Because if we don't have that, then it's gonna be a mess. And thankfully, 
Substance Painter gives us once again another dollar sign. We're gonna click on here and see, there's like dollar sign UDEM. And what this is gonna do is automatically gonna generate this numbering for us. Um, the other thing that I like to do when it comes to files export in Substance is I don't want to use a compressed format and I certainly don't wanna use an 8-bit format, okay? Uh, I want to use the format that's going to give me the most data in the file, and that is going to be EXR. So we're going to pick EXR, and I am pleading to you guys to start using EXRs over PNG, over JPEG. God forbid, don't use JPEG, please. And even over TIFFs. And the reason why, because 16-bit TIFF is good, but... In my tests, it actually yields a larger file, okay? So if you're doing like a 4K 16-bit uh, TIFF, it's going to be larger than a 4K EXR. And the reason why is because EXR has got a built-in compression that it's really efficient. So take my word for it, use EXR. It's going to be the best format. And it's also the most professional one. It's what the big studios use, and we want to play with the big boys. So EXR it is. Let's add the metallic. So I'm just gonna hit uh, grayscale now. I don't wanna uh, hit like the RGB, I don't wanna create like an RGB channel, I just need grayscale for, um, for anything that's basically not the color and not the normal, we are fine with grayscale because it's just the value from zero to one with zero being black and one being white and basically the gray in between being all the other values. And same thing, now I want to go under metallic I'm gonna click and drag and drop it right here and say put it in the gray channel and I'm gonna change this from PNG to EXR and then I'm gonna give it the same naming convention so uh, we want roughness so I'm just gonna go here under roughness click and drag gray channel EXR and same thing height is something that blender doesn't use very well in my opinion if there's one weakness um, first of all uh, if you want to use height with EV, the trials and tribulations that you have to go through just to use, just to get some displacement with EV is not worth it, in my opinion. And even when cycles, it's kind of clunky. I mean, maybe I'll do another tutorial on how to do a height, uh, you know, displacement map in cycles, but ah, geez, I hope they fix it. Like, I don't think that Cycles X is trying to fix it, but. If somebody from the Blender Foundation is watching this video, please, 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 you gotta have just a simple checkbox or whatever and have Cycles X do the displacement automatically, all the tessellation at render time, and ideally without taking up a lot more time to implement it. So, a height forward slash dollar project dollar UDEM and uh, height. Oops, I want to put this in between the two. Height underscore, and of course we have to grab our height, drag it into the gray channel, and switch this to EXR. And now we come to the normals, okay? And the normals that we didn't switch from DirectX to OpenGL. And the reason why I opted to stick with the default DirectX, even though I know very well that Blender uses OpenGL, is because I don't want to use the regular normal map that Substance Painter gives us, but I actually wanted to use one of those converted maps. And I'll explain to you why very specifically. So I'm gonna create an RGB channel, and this is gonna be for normals because remember normals they're not grayscale, they actually need the color information. And if, you, um, if you're using a renderer where you're using the height channel and you just want the normal to be normal, <laughs> if you just want the normal map, you don't want any height data attached to it, then in that case, go ahead and switch from DirectX to OpenGL at the beginning of the project and then you would drag this guy, this normal, you would drag it in here, okay? However, what we actually want, what I found to be a lot more useful in Blender because of the aforementioned 
crappiness in which it deals with height maps is actually want the height information to also be combined with the normal okay i want substance painter to not just give me the normals i want substance painter to combine the normals with the height information because it's just going to give me a much more usable um you know render that's going to be a lot closer to what i actually have here in substance painter than uh, if i just use the regular good old normal so because of that we can use these converted maps and the converted maps what it's doing is it's taking the normal information and it's i guess adding it to the height information and then it's generating a brand new normal map for us and because we're using these converted maps anyway we have the option of using DirectX or OpenGL right here, so we don't really need to change our project setting because Substance Painter is gonna do it on export for us. And so what I wanna do is just kinda click on this OpenGL normal converted map because Blender is OpenGL. I just gonna click and drag it here and put it into the RGB channel. Uh, the nice thing is that if we wanted to also export a normal direct X, I can easily do that just by adding yet another channel. So, so this way we have both. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this normal direct X this time. And I'm just going to drag it in here and repeat the operation. Just say RGB channel. And of course, I need to change both of these guys to EXR. Okay. So now we're covering all the bases when it comes to normal maps. As I said, the only time that you wouldn't want to use this methodology and you would just want to use just a normal map is if you're definitely, if you definitely know that you're using a high map in Blender or whatever other render engine that you're using. But so now I'm going to go under settings and output template. I want to use this brand new Blender RBT that I just created. And uh, the file type is based on the output template, EXR, all the way. And the size is based on each texture's set size. And here's where we start getting into some of the power of UDIMS, because um, the textures don't have to all have the same exact resolution. So, you know, for, for instance, uh, uh, this anodized blue, right, like right now they're all set at like 2K, because that's what my... Um, a project started out at 2k but I could just as easily go in here and just kind of I don't know like change this to 4k because maybe I want like more resolution just for this beige coating but the black coating is fine at 2k and maybe uh, this uh, uh, camera or chrome or color thing could just be 1k I don't know oh and also um, what I did is after I exported my FPX I realized that because I um, I had the original materials, remember like originally we had like a lot more um, uh, material divisions than what we ended up, I combined some of them. Um, there are a couple of these um, materials that actually didn't contain anything. There's metal 004, there's gauge. So I just unchecked those and, um, and that's it. So on that note, I'm just gonna hit export and let Substance Painter do its thing. And now we're going to go into Blender finally and open up this mesh and tie it in with all of these UDEMs and keep our fingers crossed that it actually works. All right, we are finally in Blender. Just where we started with the last tutorial, now we're finally back in Blender to bring it all home. So let's get rid of the cube. I really don't need it. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna say import FBX. All right, so our Cosmonaut is here. Problem is he's, he's teeny tiny because of the size conversion from Houdini. So I'm just gonna bring this up to one. Okay, so now this is Cosmonaut. Yay. Everything made it in one piece. And uh, what I want is I want to, you know, now reconnect it with the materials that we came up in Substance Painter. So uh, you'll see that we actually have all of our materials in here, okay? And the cool thing about UDIMs is that we don't really need them. We just don't. Uh, the nice thing is that uh, with UDIMS, because it's an entire set, it kind of knows automatically where to go. So we can get rid of all of these materials. However, before I do, I do want to use something about these materials that is going to come in handy. 
Um, I want to go into edit mode. I'll show you what I'm about to do. So I'm just going to hit tab. But uh, here is our visor. I'm just going to select a handful of these guys. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to say select similar material. And it should automatically select all of the glass pieces parts. And it did. So we have the visor and it also has this camera and, and little whatever the hell this thing is. Okay, so those are all like our glass parts of our mesh. And, um, and I'm going to hit P. And this is going to separate this into another mesh. So I'm just going to say uh, separate by selection. We can exit out of edit mode because we are done with any sort of separation for our mesh. And now we can get on about the business of, well, let, let me label this. So we have these two things. And as I said, uh, let's, let's deal with just the, the main portion right now. So I'm just going to just go through and delete all of these materials. And I'd rather start from scratch. All right, so I'm done deleting all my materials for my suit and the glass and all this kind of stuff, because as I said, I want to start from scratch. Uh, some of you might point out, well, you could have just done this in Houdini. You could have just deleted the attributes and just exported two FPX files, one for uh, Substance Painter and one for uh, Blender. And yes, I could have done that, but this is faster and easier and whatever. Okay, so I'm just going to create, I'm going to go under like shading mode here, center this guy like so. And uh, let's create a new material. And we're going to call this uh, astronaut main. Okay. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to change my uh, world's HDRI. And I have, uh, actually, I have like um, the same HDRI as Substance Painter is using as a default, which is this panorama HDR. So I'm just going to pull this guy up just so that we have you know, the, the same exact HDRI that we were using in Substance Painter. It's going to help us evaluate how our materials are coming in. Now, what I want to do is I want to import the textures. Now, I know I have like my little node wrangle thing extension built in, uh, and I could kind of hit I don't know, shift option something something to kind of create a principal shader automatically and just kind of point it to that thing. Uh, I tried it, uh, UDEMS doesn't really work with that, so I'm just going to have to do it manually. Okay, so add uh, a texture and just like an image texture and I'm just going to navigate to my desktop under textures, I'll start with the base color and just open image. And the cool thing is even if I just click on the first file, uh, Blender is smart enough to realize that this is part of a UDEM set. It sees that number at the end and it automatically imports it as a UDEM. And if we kind of zoom in here, you can see that it says UDEM tiles. Uh, another benefit to EXR is that it puts the color space in linear mode, which is correct. And we don't have to switch between RGB and non-color whenever we're using the roughness. So that also saves some time. But I'm just going to plug this guy in here. I'm going to go into my uh, shading modes. Or actually, you know what? Let's go straight into EV. In, in one step, we just automatically mapped all of our UDEMs automatically, which is really, really fantastic. Uh, so I want to do the same thing now for uh, the other um, elements. So let's go and do another texture, image texture. And same thing. And this time, I want to navigate. Uh, to uh, let's do metallic same thing just click on the first one put metallic on it metalness whatever it's called move this aside um, let's do roughness so and now we have roughness and last but not least let's do the normals so I'm just gonna hit Texture, image texture. And I also need a vector normal map node in between. Color and normal. And put this under normal. And now we have normals. And the nice thing is by using the converted normal instead of the regular normal from Substance Painter, it's also bringing in the height information as well. So this is 
a lot nicer because it yields um, you know a little bit better detail in the normal map than just if it was strictly just the normal okay and um, I'm gonna go into the astronaut glass I'm gonna enable this guy and actually I'm also switching from EV to cycles because it's gonna be a little bit nicer for you know some of the um, transparency that we want to put in here so under the astronaut glass I'm just going to create a new material. I'm going to call this astronaut glass. Okay. We're going to copy and paste these guys because we're using the same unit maps. And I'm just going to plug them into base color, into our metallic, into our roughness, and into our normal, even though I don't think there's any normals to this visor right here but you know let's just kind of keep it that way uh, so the nice thing now is that I can actually go in here and if I want to I can uh, start playing with my uh, opacity that would be the alpha so now we have this transparent semi-transparent sort of visor. I mean, of course, I would need to like put a face in there or something like that, but at least we have uh, a bit of a glass type of uh, thing going. This is why I wanted to separate my glass elements from the rest of the mesh, just so that I could have access to this alpha, because if I just used one single shader for our entire cosmonaut astronaut uh, mesh, then all of it would start becoming transparent, right? And you don't want that. I just want the glass parts to have some transparency to them, not, not the whole thing. So this gives me at least a degree of flexibility to be able to just affect the glass. In Substance Painter, what I could have done is I could have added an opacity map and then just put the opacity uh, for the glass at uh, uh, zero and then run it into the alpha channel and all this kind of stuff but I just find this to be a lot simpler I would kind of recommend doing it this way all right so we made it okay we started out in blender in the last tutorial we went into Houdini to do our um, unwrapping to optimize the mesh to do our UDIM layout and we brought everything into substance painter we uh, added materials to our mesh and then we configured like a new template just for Blender and we exported all of our UDEM tiles and then we reconnected everything into Blender and it all came in really beautifully and it's so simple and it's so easy. We just have like two materials for everything. It covers everything. So anyway, I hope you guys found this useful and uh, you know, I'm sure there's other better ways of doing all this stuff but this is how I do it and it works for me and hopefully it will work for you <laughs> at that rate uh, I'm gonna stop talking right now so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time